2024 will be a year of revival where we will see more people saved by the power of the Holy Ghost, where we will plunder hell and we will populate heaven for the glory of God because this is our assignment and we are unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ. Unlock the melody within your unused instruments. Donate today and empower aspiring musicians. Your generosity resonates with the harmony of opportunity. Make a difference by donating your musical instruments. For more information on how you can donate, contact your zone pastor or visit your nearest information desk. Thank you for tuning into our CRC's live broadcast with Pastor Art. Pastor Art is going to preach a message that's going to change your life. Most definitely, TD. Now we want to encourage you to keep the energy up there as we give everything in praise and worship. Good evening, church. Are you ready to give your best praise tonight?
Come on, Jesus. Come on, he's good, he's great. Come on, let's lift our hands all over South Africa. One more time, we praise the name of Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. Of Strum, wherever you are, Bloemfontein, the thousands forever. Come on, give him a praise here tonight. Come on, give him a praise. He's worthy on the balcony, on the floor, the thousands, the many thousands there in Bloemfontein tonight, Johannesburg, in Kimberley, in Potts of Strum. I see that church is exploding in Potts of Strum, in Cape Town. Wherever you are tonight, all over the nations of the world, Russia, Israel, America, Europe, Iran, India, Pakistan, China, Africa, of course, Faith TV, Praise TV, we welcome you tonight, Facebook Live, TLC Online, YouTube, all the people that are with us tonight, we are going to have an amazing time, uh, radio stations as well, welcome tonight, hundreds of thousands watching live tonight on different platforms, and then broadcast to millions of people in the week to come. Come on, give the Lord a praise tonight because God is worthy. Man, that's a whole the law praising and unbidding. If you shout for your soccer team, you're going to shout louder than that. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on. Come on, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, just praise Him a little bit longer because when praise goes up, heaven comes down. Come yeah, on, we need to praise Him a little bit today so that the walls can come down. Praise is our weapon on the battlefield. Come on, young people. Whatever you are facing, praise is the weapon God has given us on the battlefield. We stand triumphant. We stand knowing that we have the victory. In Jesus' name. We're just sorting the sound out. Don't worry about that. Um, God bless you. Welcome. I'm so glad you're all here tonight. It's good to have you. I already have good news, by the way. Um, you're not going to have bad news here. Yeah? You're going to go read a newspaper to find bad news. But you're going to find good news at CRC tonight in Jesus' name. I want you to look at the person next to you. And that's not the time to hit on somebody else's wife, okay? That might be the time to, to, to say to the girl that you've been eyeing. No, I'm not uh, uh, saying that. Say to that person you are special tonight. Tell him. Tell him righteously so. You're special. Come on, give somebody a hug if you're a girl. You're free now, okay? Hug somebody, give some love to somebody. Make somebody feel special. Come on. If you don't know the people around you, introduce yourself. Say my name is Jan Brandt. Here go from Bray. Friday, come here by my Bray. Amen. In Jesus' name. You may take your seats. 
We have a moment. And that's all we need. I'm going to talk to you about you tonight. And my message is God's masterpiece. Um, not God's mistake, but God's masterpiece. God's handiwork. You are exactly who God wants you to be. You are alive at this time because God designed you to be alive at this time. You have been predestined by God. Listen, you could have lived 2,000 years ago, but you're not. You're living tonight. And sometimes people say, I wish I lived in the days of John the Baptist. No, these days are better. I wish I lived in the days of Elijah. No, these days are better. We are living in the days of the latter glory. We are living in the greatest days. And that means the greatest days of your life is ahead of you. No matter the challenges we are facing as young people in our country, in our world, I want you to know today that you can be secure in the midst of a shaken world. In an ever-changing world, we serve an unchanging God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I've learned this, that most, most people don't like themselves. Most people are not happy with themselves. Most people, when they look in the mirror, they think, well, if I was taller, if I was shorter, if I was lighter, if I was darker. That's why white, these white people go lie in the sun and they get red and then they get brown because they're not happy to be peach pink. So we have to be comfortable in ourselves and comfortable with God made us and comfortable with our design because Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love anybody else. And if you don't feel good about yourself, you're not going to make other people feel good about themselves. If you're always putting yourself down, the chances are pretty good you're always putting other people down as well. Because sometimes people think the only way they can have significance is to put other people down. No. There's enough space for all of us. There's enough place for all of us. You can be exactly who God called you to be. Amen. Sometimes people say, I don't want to be in the shadow of somebody else. Well, not if you serve Jesus, because even a tree in the forest, there comes a time where his shadow falls on another tree. So nobody has to fear to be overshadowed. All you have to know is that God created you. God intended you. You may not know your earthly father, you may be somebody adopted, but I want to tell you today that God planned you. I tell you today that you are special. I tell you today on the authority of God's Word, you are unique. Come on. I tell you today there is nobody in the universe just like you. So come on. Why don't you stand to your feet and celebrate who Jesus created you to be in Jesus' name. You know, um, when my, when my children were born, I was the proudest father ever. I don't know if there's a prouder father than me, but every father, okay, you all are like that. But I mean, my firstborn, when Angelique was born, she was perfect. Came out 2.94 kilograms, dropped to 2.74 kilograms, and uh, I held in my hand, and I went to the room where all the babies were lying, and I thought, I feel so sorry for everybody else, because my child is perfect. Beautiful. And when David was born, he was also perfect, but he looked like a little boxer. He came out different, but perfect. And then Chanel with streaks in her hair. I remember it like this morning, and every parent knows exactly what I'm saying. That love that you feel when that child is born. And sometimes people preach about a God that is angry and a God who is not loving and a God that is ready to write you off, a God that will cancel you. I read somebody this, this week, somebody put a post, I delete these stupid posts immediately, that says, uh, like the prodigal son, you can lose your salvation. No, you're not just going to lose your salvation because you may give up on God, but God is not going to give up on you. You may run away from God. God is going to run off to you. I'll tell you something. My kids are my kids for life. It doesn't matter what they do. I love them with an everlasting love. And that is nothing in comparison to the love that God has for you. So tonight, if you are still doubting yourself and tonight maybe you think you are not special, 
I am going to show to you from God's word how special you are. And I pray that the Holy Spirit changes something in your mind and something in your heart so that when you look in the mirror, you say, good morning, beautiful, or good morning, handsome, and start saying something positive about yourself. Stop looking at yourself and devaluing yourself and comparing yourself to other people. You are designed by God, and let's talk about it tonight. God's masterpiece. A masterpiece. Yo fro, yo man, yo kant, yo friend. God's a master stuck. This is what the Bible say. Not what God's team say, but what the Bible say. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 10, New Living Translation, the Bible says, God saved you by His grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Say amen. amen. Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. God doesn't love you because you are a good person. God loves you because of what Jesus did for you. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. I want you to put your hand on your heart tonight. Come on, talk to yourself tonight. You're going to have to learn to do that. Put your hand on your heart tonight there in Johannesburg. There in Bloomingdale, the thousands there. And say tonight, say I, say it, say I am God's masterpiece. I know you may not feel like it, but tonight you are going to change your thoughts about yourself. The Bible says He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the things... He planned for us long ago. So when God looks at you, He doesn't see a mistake. He doesn't see somebody without potential. God sees a masterpiece. He's not an amateur potter. He is a master potter. He is a master at what He does. And a true artisan who shaped you into a masterpiece. You may not see yourself like that yet, And you may not be exactly what you want to be, but thank God you are not what you used to be. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And let me tell you this, most people have challenges with self-confidence and with self-esteem because of what people told them about themselves. So people struggle with confidence in the world that we live in today. What is propagated from many nations around the world really is to bring people into an identity crisis, getting people back to the place of asking, who am I? What am I? Making people feel unworthy, and then people go on a journey to find significance. And they get themselves in trouble seeking the acceptance of the peers, seeking the acceptance of the culture. Let me tell you today, that if you understand who you are, if you understand how much God loves you, if you will value yourself the way God values you, you will not allow anybody else to taint you as a masterpiece of God. Think about the most expensive painting in the world. You are better than the greatest Michelangelo, Rembrandt von von Rein. You are greater than any Leonardo da Vinci. You are greater than the greatest masterpiece. And people keep those masterpieces locked up somewhere because they value that. Well, you better begin to value yourself. You better begin to love yourself. A masterpiece is a work done with extraordinary skill. No, you have been created with extraordinary skill. And uh, uh, the woman a little bit more, right? Because God made Adam from the dust and he pushed us together and we can see it. Men are a little bit different. And then God took time with the wife and he handfully, skillfully crafted her into who she is. A masterpiece is a skillful or impressive example of something that already tells you that there is nothing ordinary about you. You are not Joe Average. You're not somebody bland, beige, boring. You're not here to fit in. You are a total original, created in the image and the likeness of God. You are a greater masterpiece, thank you, uh, media, than the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. 
Now, I wonder what that painting is worth. You are a greater masterpiece than the starry night by Vincent van Gogh. Than the Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci. Than the birth of Venus by Sandro Botticelli. Than the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. Oh, people hang those paintings as a masterpiece and they show it off. And we are of more value and worth than anyone of those paintings and we want to go around and stoop our heads and feel bad about ourselves while we were skillfully handcrafted by God, created exactly who God wants you to be, an original, fearfully and wonderfully made, bought with a price, not silver and gold, but the blood of Jesus Christ, the greatest price that anybody has ever paid for any person is the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, you were bought with a price. The Bible says, therefore you have to glorify God with your spirit and your soul. Come on, give God some glory that you were purchased by the blood of Jesus. You are a one of a kind masterpiece. Um, I have three children, they have similarities, but they're all very different. And I, I say to our young CRC pastors, and we have many of them, I mean, we have great preachers, you know this, all over South Africa building great, great, great churches. I say it's okay, the DNA can be the same, and sometimes some of my ways can come out of you, but you're not an odd boss of clone. You are an original. Find yourself and be yourself, because that's where God's blessing is going to be, in you being an original. Being who God designed you to be. Learning. Not now going exactly the opposite direction. But continuing in who God made you to be. You were perfectly handcrafted by God. You have to hear this today. Not an accident. A copy. Not a shadow of somebody else. No. You were planned by God. Listen. You may sit in a squatter camp tonight. You may feel hopeless tonight. You may feel unworthy. I know what it feels like because I was there. That's what sin does you. Sin destroys your mind. Sin destroys your self-esteem. But then here comes Jesus and He recreates you. And He makes you somebody beautiful and brand new. A new creation in Christ Jesus. And you discover yourself and you begin the road of recovery through knowing who you are in Christ. But then celebrating who God created you to be. So God planned you. Say, I have been planned by God. That means God has a plan for your life. Not for the pastor and the prophet and everybody else. That means you. You at university. You in the school. God has a plan for you. And why am I talking about this tonight? Because when you value yourself, you will value the season that you are in. You won't mess around like everybody else at school or at university and uh, run uh, with a crowd for acceptance and bow to peer pressure and the culture of the day. I taught my children this one thing. Not that they are better than anybody else, but I said to them, you are better than that. Meaning what? I said, people can criticize you and they could, can put pressure upon you and try to lure you into their way of life, but you are better than that. You are above that you can become like any one of them in a second and actually they are criticizing you for valuing your virginity because they gave up their virginity and if you have you can be restored in Christ but then you have to come back to God and allow God to restore you and allow God to clean you and allow God to heal you and allow God to build a treasure in you where you see yourself again as beautiful as a daughter of God. One thing my children would always say was, Daddy, we don't want to disappoint you. Not Daddy standing with a hammer and a rule book, but Daddy loving them for who they were and telling them who they were again and again and again. I never told them who they were not. And when you read the Bible, God never tells you who you're not. 
God never points out your wrongs and your flaws and your mistakes. This whole Bible, Paul's revelation, is telling you what's right about you. It's telling you who you are. It's telling you the life of victory you can live through the power of God's grace. So when we point out people's mistakes, we focus them on their mistakes. And when the law comes, sin revives and I die. We have to point people to the solution. We have to point people to Christ. We have to point people to their completion because in Christ you are complete. In Christ you are justified. In Christ you are righteous. In Oh, come on, man. In Christ you have a future. In the name of Jesus, we cannot be like people in the world in a state of confusion because we don't know who we are no you are God's masterpiece you are called God's own again and again the scripture assures us of how much God loves you now not the person sitting next to you you this relationship of pursuit is encountering the love that God has for you. That is unconditional. That is not an open-ended statement. That is God loves you, full stop. Not God loves you if. God loves you. God agapes you. And when you are secure in that love, you will become secure in who God created you to be. So while people in the world are wrestling with identity, low self-worth, self-esteem, struggling with fear of rejection and seeking significance through wrong relationships, we as Christians have to be established in the knowledge of the love that the Father has for us and what God says about us, that we are God's handiwork we are God's masterpiece. Listen, girl, I don't care if you never have had a boyfriend. Thank God for it because God is keeping Mr. Right for you. Say amen in the name of Jesus. You need to be happy that not, not one of the first team dated you. You need to be happy that not everybody's chasing after you. That means you are special and God is keeping you for Mr. Special. Can a young lady jump up and shout amen tonight in Jesus' name. I mean, uh, one of the beautiful ladies in our church, she runs the children's church in um, Johannesburg. Amy, I had the privilege to officiate a wedding ceremony on, on, on Friday night. And uh, I, I don't know how old she is, etc. But everybody was like, when's she going to get married? When's she going to get married? You know how people are as you get a little bit older? Have you got a boyfriend? Uh, when you're going to get married? And then when you're married is when you're going to have your first child? None of your business, man. <laughs> Butt out, man. None of your business. I first want to enjoy my wife before, before we have children. Because, because once them little pink feet come, Come on, girls. Remember, your, your, your husband is baby number one. <laughs> Tip. Your husband doesn't want to move down the ladder as the babies are born. Your husband is the biggest baby. And, and if he feels like baby number two, baby number three, baby number four, he's going to be shout louder than any one of those babies. <laughs> Amen. Come on, brothers. I know most of you are not married, but say hurrah or something. Come on, help the brother. So what does it mean to be God's masterpiece? Quickly, in three hours. <laughs> Listen, I... I I was at a, I, I had many wedding things this week and I've been very busy. Yesterday I was at one and that wedding went on all day. It's like, Jesus help us. This is like the Bible times where they, they had a feast for days. So I said, I can't do days. I have to be in church and I have to conserve my energy. And I'm so happy that you are having a feast for days, but I can't feast for days. Okay. I want to feast in church. Okay. So I don't know what that has to do with the message, but any case. So what does it mean to be God's masterpiece? Number one, listen, you were created in God's image. Whether you're black, white, yellow, pink, it, you were created in God's image. That's why segregation is a sin from the pits of hell. That's why treating people based on their skin color 
is from the pits of hell. Because the Bible says we all hail from one blood. No, you better clap better than that, CRC. Many people don't like us because our doors are open to everybody. I've been called a friar since 1988. When I got saved and God told me, build a church for all people. People called me a friar, as Afrikaner. And I realized that my calling is not just to white people. And I thank God today. I said I thank God today. Yes, I thank God for my white brothers and sisters. But I thank God for my black brothers and sisters. I felt more love from the black brothers and sisters than you can ever imagine. Come on, it's the truth. So to live in this little isolated world where you exclude people, you have to question your theology. Because every human being has the right to access God. Rich, poor, black, white, literate, illiterate. Every human being is created equal in the sight of God. Every human being has equal worth and value in the sight of God. The reason people are broken and downtrodden is because of the systems of man fueled by greed to exploit the poor and to oppress the poor. We pray to God that this will change in South Africa and that South Africa will be a prosperous country. Say amen. That our, our poor, that the other back of poverty will be broken over South Africa in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. You cannot just champion the cause of your culture. Because when you love God, you love your neighbor. Love cannot be exclusive. That does not represent the nature of God. What color was Adam? Tell me. What color was Adam? Hello? Come, Mr. Clever, give me the answer. Do you think he was European? I said, believe, man. I was Roy Suzak. Yeah. He was made of the dust. Adam means red. Just remember, I'm red. I just have makeup on for the television. And my name is Adam. Peach pink. Okay. It, it, it is sad for me that after all these years, people still fight one another based on, on, on skin color. People who do that and that value people of different nationalities and races and color more than others have not even crossed the first step into Christianity. I, I, I talk to pastors and it's not criticism and, and, and they have this all white thing going and I say, what are you doing? What are you doing? If there are people on your doorstep in poverty and, and you play the game where you just now, you, you see when people go for me is when I talk about these things that are real. Because you cannot preach the gospel and exclude anybody. say more than that play these little social church games catering for social groupings that's not what the church is the church is the middle ground where all people should come every tongue tribe and nation where the rich and the poor oh come on say amen where everybody can come and encounter God I said where everybody can come and encounter God the beauty of Christianity is the diversity you may not shout in church, but don't criticize the sister that shouts in church. Maybe she's shouting because she hasn't got money to feed her children. And you criticize her. Mind your own business when other people are, are reaching out to God. And stop sitting there with your intellectual little mind 
and criticize somebody else because they ruffle your feathers. You don't know what they are going through. So leave them be, leave them so they can express themselves in God and worship God, amen. So God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. You did not evolve from some amoeba of Proteus and spill out on red rock without arms and legs and over years and years and years you develop legs and then you jump like a frog and then somehow you grew into something else and into something else and then you were an ape man. I know some people act like that, but um, that's not who you are. In the, you were created in the image and in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. You were created by God. So celebrate your creation. Celebrate who God made you to be. Say amen today in Jesus' name. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. So when David looks at creation and people study the planets and the galaxies and people talk about the magnificence of what's happening in the stars and the planets and everything they find. David looks at this in the Old Testament already. He says, I'm amazed at the work of your hand. But Father, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels. That word angel is Elohim. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You've made him a little lower than yourself. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. On your head, there is a crown of glory and honor, not a crown of shame and defeat. God created you in His image, and He placed a crown of dominion on your head, a crown of glory and honor. So lift your head. I said lift your head. Look your world straight in the eye and walk as a son, as a daughter of God. Hallelujah. Number two. Some of you need to get a little bit more enthusiastic because um, I think, I don't want to say Jesus said, if you don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. But um, I know some of you moved from the free state here, but please, man. All night awesome. In Him we live and move and have our being. Thank you. I will obey Lord three minutes. Yes, Lord Television. Number two, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verse 14. The Bible says, I will praise you. Say, I will praise you. Say it. Lift your hand. Say it. Say, I will praise you. You, you must say it. Because if you don't say it, you're not going to believe it. Say, I will praise you. Say it. I will praise you. Because I say I am fearfully and wonderfully made in Jesus' name. That's what David says. He says, I will praise you. Now remember, David was criticized by his father. David's father did not even remember he had a son. When, when Samuel came to anoint the next king, first Eliab went past and said, Surely the Lord and Lord's anointed, the man in the natural that looked like he had everything going for himself. And then Shammah came, the man that looked like he had it all together spiritually, and then Samuel thought he made a mistake. He said, is there another? He said, oh yeah, there's the youngest, the one God can't use. And that's exactly the one God's going to use because God doesn't look on the outward appearance. God looks at who He called you to be, who He created you to be. And you may just be a nobody in everybody else's eyes, but I'll tell you something. You better get ready for God to make you a somebody and for God to elevate you and for God to use you and for God to bless you in Jesus' name. But you have to let go of the down talk and the minimizing yourself and you have to begin to celebrate yourself like David did. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When his brother spoke down on him, this is what David did. He said, talk to the hand. I know who I am. I know who I am. Sometimes you have to tell people, talk to the hand. Thank you. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. I know who I am. And you just move on as a shepherd boy in the eyes of people. But in the eyes of God, you are a king in the making, anointed and appointed by God. You are not, uh, 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 your, your value is not determined by people, not by your brother scorning you, not by King Saul who says you are not able, David. You are who God said you are, born for this time, predestined for this time. Nobody believed in David, but God believed in him. And therefore David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made 
Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows very well. So stop doubting yourself and begin to celebrate yourself for who God made you to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, come on television audience. God has great plans for your love, and I'll tell you, your identity is a key to fulfilling your destiny. Yes, in Christ you're a new creature, but begin to celebrate who you are. Celebrate the gifts and the talents God gave you, the personality you have. Stop finding fault with yourself and begin to thank God for who you are and watch how things are going to change. Because I'll tell you, when things shift on the inside of you, you are going to shift things on the outside. God bless you. God loves you. You're a child of God, highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give them a clap. Number three. No, no, let me finish with number two. Your hair is beautiful. I understand fashion, but why do we want to change everything? No, I'm going to get myself dangerous ter territory here. Let me just hush. Oh, this can go, this can go anyway. This can go anyway, so. Um, just look at yourself and, and love what you see. I'm not saying don't put on makeup. Please put on the polyfiller, girls. We all want you to wear polyfiller. I mean, uh, I mean makeup, okay? <laughs> I tell people, be the best version of yourself. But then you are you. You are built differently. You're not going to look like what Hollywood tries to force down your throat. This is the perfect picture of a woman. No, who says that? You are perfection. You. And you're going to find a man one day that's going to love you. I say to you, you know, my, uh, I don't want to get you personal, but my daughters, they're quite different. So I, I, I say to Marno, yeah, you okay. I said this because I, I'm real, okay, with these things. I said, what do you like about my daughter? No, um, she's spirit. I said, Lace the resort. You don't have to tell me my daughter is spiritual. I raised her. I didn't ask you nothing. She's 50 times more spiritual than you, so don't come with that nonsense. What do you like? Hello? He said, I like her. Beautiful eyes. I said, then you better always tell her her eyes are beautiful. He said, I like her. <laughs> Don't worry, Angelic, I won't say. Okay. <laughs> I said, then you better always uh, put your hand on her, her hand, because he was talking about her hand, okay? After marriage now. You don't marry her, and now suddenly you don't like what you see. You, you like that for the rest of your life. Say amen. So, so that should lift this pressure off of you as young people. Most of you aren't married. That you're trying to be something that you really are not. To try and please somebody that is never going to be pleased. If, they, if, 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 the, if that guy can't love you as you are and who you are, and he's now already telling you, well, you need to do this or do that. You know, I laughed one day. Uh, a precious couple that I've been friends with for many years, and the brother was growing sideways uh, like, uh, 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 what do you call it? A tenpin, one of those things. Factual. And his wife was always like, perfectly in shape. And one day, I laughed. I found it very... I said, my, whatever he called it, he said, you know, you've, you know you've, you put on a little bit of weight. Um, you need to get rid of this. I thought, my word. You're like a ball rolling around and you're telling your wife. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You can relax your face and smile. It's okay. So, uh, number three, God knew you before you were born. No, no, let's go back to number two. Your hair. Black squirrel, here is warm, but what do you do? My tongue is brown. It's 
Somebody's trying to make me stop speaking. This is like, okay. <laughs> Your eyes. Your eyes. People are like, I wish I had blue eyes. Why? Huh? You're not one of Hitler's youth brigade. Your ears. Your nationality. I had a pastor once say to me, if I was white, I said, qualify. Huh? You think white is better? No, black don't crack. I mean, white people have to nip it and tuck it all the time. It's like some of my pastors, they're 50 years, okay, a little bit younger than me, and they still look like 20. I say, what the heck is up with you? You say, Pastor, I'm black, I don't crack. I said, okay, I'm white and I crack. So. Everything about you. Everything about you. We live in a culture where people criticize. Avoid that. I spoke about it this morning. You become secure. And that's what I taught my children. You be secure in what your dad says to you. You don't listen to anybody else. Because the mean-spirited people out there will always tell you what's wrong with you. I told them since they were this small, I said, don't listen to them. You listen to your dad. Because your dad will tell you the truth. Now, I'll tell you this. You better listen to your dad. I'm talking to you about your heavenly father. Because other people will always tell you what's wrong with you. God only tells you what's right with you. And 2,000 years ago, he fixed you. Come on, child of God. He sent his son to that cross to fix what is wrong with you. You are not perfect. But I am confident that he who started the work in you is able to finish the work he has started in you. God is not done with you. God is busy with you. And you are becoming better and you are growing from glory to glory. Come on, young person, shout amen. So stop being hard on yourself, and criticizing yourself and putting yourself down. Look into the mirror and celebrate yourself. Celebrate who God created you to be. I'm not talking about a narcissistic love. I'm talking about a love rooted in the relationship you have with your heavenly father. Number three, God knew you before you were born. People talk about where does life begin? Life begins when God plans you. Psalm 139, you know, we deal with people, they are a result of a rape, they are a result of many things, and uh, people struggle with a lot of trauma, and we deal with it as a church. We have people who specialize in dealing with these things all the time. And one of the greatest things we have to teach those people, um, what happened is tragedy, but you are here by God's design. It, it, it's not how you got here, it's the fact that you are here. And that means you are special. That means you are special. And that means you have to accept the Father who predestined you. You are planned by God to be here. Say amen tonight in Jesus' name. You have to believe it. So look in the mirror and celebrate God's masterpiece. David says in Psalm 139 verse 15, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. And skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, yet being unformed, and in your book they were all written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. So God planned your destiny even before you were born. Ephesians 1 was for just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. Jeremiah 1, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a doctor, a lawyer, a prophet, a pastor. You are my workmanship. And if you follow me, I will fulfill my plan for your life. So you don't doubt yourself because other people doubt you. You don't devalue yourself because other people devalue yourself. No, you are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ God skillfully handcrafted you. You are God's masterpiece. Number four, God has a great plan for your life. 
Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That means each and every one of you have been predestined by God to live a great life and God has a divine plan for your life. We are His workmanship created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Romans 8, 28, we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So if we stay on track and in the purpose of God, all things will turn around for our good. What was meant to harm you, God is going to turn around for your good. What was meant to curse you, God is going to turn around to bless you. Come on, because you are God's child. Shout amen in Jesus' name. Number five, I'm going quickly. I'll be finished in uh, a few minutes. Oh, I was talking about that long wedding yesterday, and it was the reason uh, um, I, my brain also thinks many things that will I preach. Uh, it was like, it's going to be a short wedding. I said, Jesus said, behold, I come quickly. 2,000 years later, he's not yet. So this is definitely not a short wedding. Okay. Zechariah 2, beside you are God's treasure. Listen what God says. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eyes. Oh, you didn't hear me. Put your hand on your heart and say, I am the apple of my father's eye. That means, uh, forgive me for saying the blue-eyed boy. I don't know what the new correct political terminology is in South Africa. Help me. Uh, don't say I'm God's blue-eyed boy. But Okay, say I'm God, the apple of his eye. Say it. I'm the apple of his eye. I am the Joseph of my father. I have that Technicolor dream coat. I am clothed with favor. In the name of Jesus, I am the apple of my father's eye. Not that person. I am the apple of his eye. That's why when people get blessed, we don't get jealous. We say, I stand in the same line. Hallelujah. If God did it for him, God's going to do it for me. Like me, as an earthly father. What I do for Angelique, I do for David, I do for Chanel. I don't have a favorite, and yet they're all my favorites. Amen. So I say, Angelique, you're my favorite. I say, Chanel, you're my favorite. I say, David, you're my favorite. You are all my favorites. Now that's God, God's thoughts about you. How precious are your thoughts toward me? Not thoughts of judgment, but thoughts of love. When God thinks about you, He doesn't look at you and, and you have to duck. It's wrong theology. People don't understand what Jesus did. So they preach messages to incite fear. The Bible says fear brings bondage. And he that fears is not perfected in love. You have to be established in the love of God for the power of sin to be broken over your life. No law can break the power of sin. What the law could not do, God did by sending His Son. And God demonstrated that on the cross. God so loved that He gave. The Bible says, while we were sinners, God demonstrated His love and sent His Son to die for us. So you are the apple of God's eye. 1 Peter 2 says, you are God's chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are special. Say, I am special. Come on, you have to say it. Then we know number six, God calls us his child. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. Do you even understand what that means? That, you know, if, if you have the privilege to be a parent and you see that child, you fall in love. Do you get that? Do you or don't you? You're in love. Like, look, when all these grandkids of mine started popping out, seven in a few years, it was like traumatic for me. <laughs> it's like, what the heck are my kids doing? Suddenly, they've turned into rabbits. <laughs> Let's just have babies upon babies upon babies. Now, I'm still dealing with child number one, Opa, and next minute is number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. To say, Marcus, kijk maar, as je my dochter weer verwachten maak, dan gaan ek die snoei skerf wat. Marcus, was you? But what a joy. <laughs> the, 
the innocence of a child, how they just love. <laughs> Where is it? What was that? Marcus? Snippity snip, snippity snip, snippity snip, 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 snip. It's my baby. <laughs> Chanel is my baby. And you've made her pregnant three times. Thank you, but that's enough now. Is there a doctor in the house that can help? <laughs> I'm messing with you, Marcus, but only if you pass in here, so blue. But I can't see it from the end. What do you call it? But it's So God calls you his child. I think we underestimate the meaning of that because sometimes we hear things and we become callous to the significance of what it means. That's why Jesus said, if you're being evil now to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to his children? This is a relationship, not a religion. It's being secure in the love of your father who says, I planned you. You are my masterpiece. 1 John chapter 4 says you hail from God. Romans chapter 8, the Bible says you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Galatians chapter 4, the Bible says that we are now sons, no longer slaves, but sons. A son has privileges, rights. A son is accepted. It's, I spoke about the older and younger brother last week. It's like some people still are trying to earn God's favor. You have favor with a king. You are loved by your father, loved by God, valued by God, prized by God. When you accept, accept this, you will value and prize yourself. Finally, you are his workmanship. That means you are still a work in progress. You're not perfect, but in the mind of God, you are. My kids were not perfect, but I spoke to them as if they were perfect. Spoke to their future. Spoke to their destiny. Spoke life over them and not death over them. Philippians 1 verse 6, the Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I declare it over you as I close tonight. He who started this work in you will complete it. He is the potter, you are the clay. God is at work in you both to will and do his good pleasure. And God is not an amateur potter. God is a skillful artisan. God is working in you. God is shaping you. God is building you. God is directing you. God is ordering your steps. That's why all you have to do is get yourself into the presence of a loving Father. And I'll tell you, the love of God will reshape you. The love of God will break the power of sin over your life. The love of God will build confidence in your heart. The love of God will restore your self-image and your self-confidence, your God-confidence, whatever term you want to use to spiritualize things. And that love will heal you, make you feel whole, make you feel good about yourself, because I'm gonna say it again. If you don't feel good about yourself, you're not gonna make other people feel good about themselves. If you're critical on yourself, you're gonna be critical on other people. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. People need love. You need to encounter the love of God. And once you've encountered the love of God, you have to go and share that love of God with other people because there is no greater power than the love of God. The, 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 the love of God will melt the heart of the heart, most hardened sinner. Take your seat, please. Uh, will, the love of God is, is like nothing in the universe. The love of God. God so loved that He gave. He loved you when you least deserved it. He loved you when you were the furthest away from Him. He loved you knowing that you would be alive. He loved you knowing all the things you would do wrong. And still tonight, his message is the same, that there is nothing that can separate you from the love that God has for you. God's masterpiece. I know some of us have messed up the masterpiece, like taking one of those paintings, Leonardo da Vinci, and putting your brush on there and trying to fix the painting. 
And that's really when we mess ourselves up, when we try to fix ourselves. And we don't allow the skillful painter to finish the work of art in our lives. And we interfere with the process or we allow other people to interfere. I'm going to ask you tonight. You get yourself back on the potter's wheel. You get yourself back in the hand of the artisan. And I read that story about the prodigal son, and it's like he lost his salvation. He never did. The father was waiting for him. He was lost. He had to return home. Some of you have to return to your father. You have to come back. Because the road you are on now is robbing you of everything about you. And it's taking you down. Tonight, you need to hear me. That you are a masterpiece. But that masterpiece will become a reality when you connect with the master. When you connect with Christ. We started by saying, by grace you are saved through faith. It is not a work, it's a gift of God, not a work of man, lest anyone should boast. We are His workmanship. We are His masterpiece. So before salvation, you will never become the masterpiece. It's not possible. It's as you connect with the Father and put your life in His hands and surrender all to Him that He can do a work in your life. I want every head bowed, every eye closed here in Pretoria, there in Johannesburg, the thousands there in Bloomington, the many, many thousands there in Port Chifstrum, all those beautiful students, Cape Town, all those beautiful students there in all the churches tonight. God is talking to you tonight. God is stirring you tonight. And God is calling you tonight to come back to your father. Like that prodigal son had to come back to be restored. Many of you are sitting in this place and you've walked away from God. You've drifted away from God. Some of you are sitting here tonight in one of our churches there on the balcony in Bloemfontein. And if you die tonight, you don't know where you would spend eternity. Oh, you're a good person, but good doesn't get you to heaven. Jesus said you must be born again. Tonight, God is talking to you. And God is calling you to come back into a relationship with God. You're sitting here tonight, you say, Pastor, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I need to get right with God. I want to come home. Then let me pray for you tonight. I want to help you find your way back to Jesus. He is the artisan. He is the one that will write a beautiful story out of the chaos of your life. He will make something beautiful. He will give you beautiful ashes, but you have to come to Him. Every head bowed, every eye closed, people praying in this place. You're saying, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I want to surrender my life to Christ. If that's your desire, quietly, wherever you are, just lift your hand. I want to say a prayer for you quickly. All over this place, raise it up. Slip it up high now, in Jesus' name. Raise it up. Say yes, yes. God bless you, God bless you, bless you, bless you. Many hands. God bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you, God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you. Don't run from Him, run to Him. He's not a God that's filled with anger. He's not a God filled with judgment. He's a God waiting for you. He's the only one who can restore you, lift you up, put a robe of righteousness around you, and love you. I'll tell you what changed me is I felt God's love. I was religious. I encountered religion. Never the love of God. Religion never broke the power of sin over my life. What broke the power of sin is when I encountered The love of Jesus. Because when you encounter Jesus, you encounter love. And when you feel that love, nothing else compares. The desire for everything else goes. People talk about repentance. Repentance has to follow salvation. You can only repent after you experience the love of God. Otherwise, it's a work of man. Repentance is ongoing. Actually, a work of sanctification as you continue your journey in following Christ. So tonight, what you need is to encounter God's love and allow Jesus to take His place in your life. Can I pray for you tonight? You said, even aunt, you know, aunt, you tell me, Don, bloom, then Don, Potch, Kaap, Stats, Tellenbosch, why you ook al is vanaan? Don, wind ook, gabberone. 
God praat met jou, God het jou naar die gebouw ingebring, as geen afstand in die geest is, die mens, en die Heere praat met jou vanavond, en God roep jou, die wat in jou hart ervaar, is Godse liefde, die seniachtigheid, dit wat jy nog nooit ervaar het nie, is God, wat aan die deur van jou hart klop, en vanavond het jy die kese, om jou hart oop te maak, om die Heere toegang te gee, so dat jy die liefde van Christus kan ervaar, wat elke gebrokenheid in jou leven sal jeel, wat die mag van sonde oor jou leven sal preek, maar jy moet hy besluit neem, jy moet tot God nader, you need to come and open your heart, and say yes Jesus, I give you my heart, before I pray tonight, you've not yet raised your hand, you say include me in that prayer quickly, raise your hand, now in Jesus name, slip it up, 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 up. raise it, thank you, God bless you, God bless you, at the back, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, up there. Will you stand with me, please, in all our churches? Come on, all of us, let's stand. Many, many, many of you have raised your hands. This is an important part of our service, as we are going to pray with you all over South Africa, Botswana, wherever there's a location where people are. Tens of thousands gathered. God is touching you tonight. Some of you brought your friends. You know that your love will bring your friend to Christ. I spoke about the friends that carried the paralyzed man into the presence of Jesus this morning. You are the one that should carry your friend to the feet of Jesus Christ as they lowered that stretcher before Jesus. You bring your friend tonight. So they're in Cape Town, you're in Pretoria, Johannesburg, Bloemfontein, you've raised your hand. I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings. You're not gonna give it to the church so, so he doesn't disappear. That means so nobody steals it. And I want you to leave your seat wherever you are. Don't think about it and just come down the aisle closest to you. We're gonna pray a prayer and you are gonna encounter God's love. Come on, step out of your seat, come down the aisle, walk to the altar tonight, receive the love that God has for you, receive a brand new life, come on. Let's cheer our friends on, let's encourage our people, let's reach out to the people around us. Come to the altar tonight, this is your time tonight. Come on there in Bloemfontein, walk to the altar tonight. Come on, man, there's a stirring in your heart tonight. Come, 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 come. There's a stirring in your heart tonight, that's the Holy Ghost. Come tonight. He loves you. Come on, keep on walking, keep on walking, keep on walking, keep on walking. Come on. You will find yourself in the presence of Jesus and nowhere else. He loves you. kan voor die heilige geest werk in mijn harte vanavond. Kom aan, kom aan, kom aan. Hier waar die Heere praat vanavond, reageer vanavond. Kom aan vanavond, kom aan vanavond, kom aan vanavond. Kom aan vanavond, gee jou leven oor aan die Heere vanavond. Kom aan. Come on, He loves you. He loves you. He's calling you. Come on, they're in Cape Town. God's not going to wrestle you. God's going to call you. Come on. Come on, come on. They're in Bloemfontein.
God tonight, the angels in heaven are rejoicing again with us. Amen. What a privilege to pray with all of you. Listen. As one thing this life does, it pushes people down. Um, you live long enough and you don't have to live very long. There's enough things that happen that try to rob you of your dignity, your self-esteem and make you feel unworthy. I mean, I was like 17 and I was so messed up. Um, so people think young people can't be messed up. The second highest cause among young people are suicide. And people always say young people are the church of tomorrow. No, they're the church of now. They are the church now. Now. And I can say this to each one of you beautiful young people standing here tonight. There are people sitting here in our church all over from all over the country. People where this work started in Bloemfontein. People that came on buses from squatter camps as students. Today they sit as engineers, architects, lawyers, advocates, many of them key members in our churches all over South Africa. Because they heard the gospel and they responded to the love of Jesus. And they actually believed that my life can have significance. That's why we bring people to an environment outside of the environment they grow up in to give them a vision that something is possible for them that a better life awaits them because if you can catch that your environment is but temporal you're not um, defined by that environment you know uh, on my way to Johannesburg today um, and it's sad when I listen to the premier of Gauteng who's actually a good man um, talking about the crime in our country and how um, seven o'clock at night how people in certain areas like Deep Sluit and other places just cannot be out of their homes how many children have been molested and that's what I don't get about Christians especially white Christians people don't like me saying it but I just don't get it how you can just be caught up in your own isolated world. Yeah, people hate me for saying it as an Afrikaner. My exalted ano say. Because we will not change this country by living exclusive and not caring about the people whose lives are at risk. The women and the children in communities that are unsafe. We cannot look the other way. So I'm very optimistic after these elections that um, the right coalition will be formed. Do you want inside information? No, then you're going to call me a prophet, and I don't want that title. Thank you. I saw I'm wearing a bishop's robe. I just have to find it. But in any case rather amusing okay in any case so um, there are people standing here tonight if, if you will accept what I shared with you tonight young men I don't care how messed up you are what you've done I promise you Jesus will lift you and put your life together and he will begin to walk with you and you can become a significant role player in this country. But if you are fueled by anger and by vengeance, you are not part of the solution. Therefore, all of us, before we come to Christ, have been messed up. I don't care, you know, people think, oh, I didn't sin that much. Man, just the fact that you think you're a good person means you were more messed up. That's how messed up it actually is. You know, I wasn't a big sinner. Qualify? The day you came out of your mother's womb, you were sinner. That beautiful angelic 2.94 kilogram, that day a sinner was born. Yeah. She had to be born again. 
So up to the age of accountability, 1 Corinthians 7 is clear, your children are justified by your faith. So if she dies before she has the age of accountability, my faith will get her to heaven. That's Bible, okay? But then when there's the age of accountability, she has to choose. She doesn't get to heaven based on her daddy's faith. So for all of you, for all of you, this can be a new beginning. But if this is not something you take serious, I'll tell you this, all the young men standing here, because a lot of you. I got saved and I took it serious. Jesus really touched me. And I took my marijuana and I washed it down the toilet. I took the alcohol and I washed it. I took the mandrax, I washed it down the toilet. I took other stuff and got rid of it. Because I got saved. Amen. Listen to me. And nobody told me to do it. No one. I did it. And I told my girlfriend, I said, I'm saved. The things we used to do, Lord, we don't do no more. The places I used to go to, I don't go no more. The joints I used to smoke, Lord, I don't smoke no more. I was going to go to church, but then I got high. I wasn't going to read my Bible, but then I got high. I was going to go to home cell, but then I got a bang, SMS. Yeah. Your journey with God is endless if you will accept what Jesus does for you and you walk with Him. And there's no human being that can stop God's plan in your life. They can criticize you. They can pull you down. They can remind you of your past. They can't stop you. You give yourself to Christ. You follow Him. And God will have the final say. And He will write a beautiful story. I want you to listen to me tonight. Because I understand the context. That some of you have no clue where you're going to work. Some of you have no clue what the future holds, etc., etc. But I can promise you this, God holds your future in the palm of His hand. And if you will walk with God, God is going to lead you. He will lead you. So we want to give you a Bible. We want to walk with you. We want to help you to be the person God called you to be. Right? To get back on your feet. To get that degree, that education. To qualify yourself in an area. And to strip this burden of shame off of you it doesn't matter what you've done tonight God restores your dignity your self-worth and your value and you have to accept it you have to walk in it and put the past behind you tonight amen put your hand on your heart and pray with me tonight all across the country everybody pray with me say Lord Jesus tonight I give my life back to you. Thank you for loving me just as I am. You loved me long before I was born. And since the day I've been born, you loved me and you've always been there. You've never given up on me. Tonight you've touched me. I turn back to you and I open my heart and I invite you, Jesus Christ, to take your place as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sin. You shed your blood for me. But you rose from the grave and you are alive. Today, I believe in the power of your grace to set me free and to save me. Today, I accept that I'm your workmanship. I am your masterpiece. My past is erased, forgiven under the blood. I have a future. I have a hope because of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm set free in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Come on, you better feel good about that. And you better allow God to lift that that, that weight and the burden of sin off of your shoulders. And you know that God heard your prayer tonight. And you know that God started to work in you. And let me say to each one of you, Philippians 1 verse 6, let me say to you standing at the altar today, being confident in this thing that the Lord who started the work in you will complete it until the day of His return.
God is not going to let you go. God will never give up on you. Today, your life is changing for good in Jesus' name. Say amen. Will you please turn to my right? We want to pray for you, give you a Bible, see how we can help you. All of you here in uh, Pretoria, turn to my right. In Johannesburg, turn to my right. In Blue Night, turn to my left. In all the other churches, come on, follow the pastors. Let's give them all a big hand clap of encouragement and love in Jesus' name. Almost done. Um, a compliment is not a compliment unless it's spoken. For, for every one negative thing a person hears, he has to hear 21 positive things. Do not be stingy when it comes to your encouragement of others. Your words matter. Affirm, compliment, look for reasons to compliment people, not foolishly. Not talking about now you go to the gym and you tell a girl you look good. Or you go to a guy in the gym and I say I like your biceps. I'm not talking about that nonsense. I'm talking about that which is godly. When we come to church, find something positive to say to the person. That sits next to you. Let's make it a habit. I like your shoes. <laughs> to, you know, I've got a shoe fetish. If I was a woman, I'd have a lot of shoes. But thank God, I, it's, a little, it's that estrogen I'm struggling with. How many of you men understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, which I have comma zero percent of. No, I do have it. I don't know what I have in any case. So, I always notice people's shoes. So, I saw, okay, no, okay, I'm also going to let me look like this. Okay. I walked in, I said to Gareth, I said, man, I like those shoes. Where did you get them? So, I, I mean, compliment people. Yeah. Not now you're a man, now you compliment another woman and you say, you look this or look that. No, man. We're talking about when you're a brother and you walk in here, compliment somebody. As a couple, compliment another couple. Bring out the best. Yeah. Don't always sit, you know, you know when, when, when... <laughs> When you look in people's direction, they shouldn't have to duck all the time because they have this beam. Jesus said, get that speck, that beam out of your eye before you look for the speck in your brother's eye. There's so much more good about people than bad. And, and sometimes all we do is duck because these beams are in the people's eyes. Get that stupid thing out of your eye. I begin to see people through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Begin to value people. Value people. I said value people. So we're going to have practice. This now you can only for a mazy gaan hier so vanavond. This is now your plan. Want as altyd ou het altyd 'n plan. Maak jy sak wat jy sê nie, is altyd 'n man met 'n plan. So ons praat nou nie van daai ouni. But just say something positive to somebody, maybe it's another, you're a younger guy, it's a more mature guy, and the way he serves God's an inspiration to you, just say, you are a real inspiration to me. We think these things, why don't we say it? Encouragement means to put courage in people. Compliment people. Find a reason to say something nice. Amen. No, will van jylle nou vir jou, jou girlfriend vertel hoe mooi sy is, want jy het plan na die dienst. Ek praat nie van dit nie. Ek praat nie van die christelike ding. Alright. It's okay now to tell your wife something in a year. You're married. Those of you are unmarried, none of that business. Okay. Find somebody. 
remind somebody. Because if you haven't noticed something nice to say yet, you know, do you ever thank those people in the car park? Do you ever thank the ushers? Thank the children's church workers? Thank the sound men? Thank the people who serve you? Huh? Thank you for serving. Thank you. Come on, some of you, don't leave the church yet. It's not time to leave. We're not done. But some of you just have to move. Because while I was preaching, God put somebody on your heart. You go to that person. You go to that person. Come on, man. Lift that person tonight. Boost that person tonight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's be lifters. 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 Not put a downers. Lifters. Lifters. Come on. Come on. Thank your home cell leader for his commitment. Thank the intercessor for that prayer. Come on. Go say something nice to somebody. Come on, go give somebody a hug. Hug another neck of a friend next to you. Hug another neck and sing along. Hug another neck of a friend right next to you. Really. Listen, my older brothers, love the younger brothers. You know, you, you know many, men, many young men have never had a hug. Hug them. Love them. People walking here, they've never had a man tell them. They never had a father tell them, I love you. You be the spiritual father. Say, hey man, I'm proud of you. I see you every Sunday. I want to tell you, God loves you. And you hug that young man. You'll hug the hatred out of him. You'll hug the bitterness out of him. You'll hug life into him. Come on. Paul writes, he says, let love be a real thing. Let there be love, love shared among us. Love. Don't find you like as was stock manikis. Want niemand het jou nog ooit a druk gegeer. Yeah. Paul writes and he says, get the bro- greet the brothers with a kiss. He's writing to the brothers. Okay, don't get confused now. You know what I'm saying. We're not talking about the Canadi- Can- Canadians. We're talking about the Bible. Huh? Yeah, now you're doing church. Because church is communion, koinonia. Come on, I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. You see, we don't know how to compliment. We know how to criticize, we don't know how to compliment. Amen. There's an atmosphere of a bunch of masterpieces together. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. If you're a masterpiece, you accept that at compliment. Hallelujah. Now, if you'd be so kind just to grab your seat for a moment and watch this week's announcements as we prepare to give generously. Amen. Every time you give to the poor, you make a loan to the Lord. Don't worry, you'll be repaid in full for all the good you've done. While people are hurting, we cannot look the other way. Jesus never called us just to sit and soak, but He has sent us just as His Father sent Him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind 
to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Proverbs 11 verse 25 says, The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Let's take a look at the last few years and the impact we've made as a church in our communities. From 2019 to 2024, we've given out school bags, clothes, cups of soup, and many, many more things. Over 67,620 food parcels have been distributed to our members in need, as well as during crisis events, like the KZN flooding disaster in 2023, upholding our ongoing mission to alleviate poverty and restore dignity to those facing hardship. 43,687 back-to-school bags were packed to the brim, full of stationery. Over 120,000 items of gently worn clothes have been handed out in our communities, just to name a few. We want to say thank you to every CRC member who continually partners with us to uplift and meet the needs of our communities. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. We ask that you remain seated as the ushers take up the offering. Please note, the doors will remain closed for your security. God bless. Just wanna thank you. 
Amen. Father, we thank you that you are a good father. We pray that tonight's word truly fell on good soil and will yield good fruit. We worship you. We honor you for your presence. May it go with us every day this week. May we reach out. May you send us to the brokenhearted. May we be intentional with the compliments and the good words that we will speak into people's lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, can you just grab your seats for a moment? We've got a few announcements on Tuesday evening. We have NMO in the chapel at 7 o'clock. Then we also have baby dedication the 24th of March. If you need more information, you can find that out at the foyer. And then we have our Passover, um, our Good Friday service on the 29th of March. And then obviously on the 31st of March is Easter Sunday. So invite your world we're going to see this building overflow in Jesus' name. Then in line with what Pastor Art has been preaching, Beauty for Ashes is a campaign that's continuing. We have seen how many women has, has been restored and how dignity has been placed back on their lives. So we want to please encourage you to keep on bringing those items to the CRC care boxes on Sunday so we can continue doing the work of the ministry. And then we're just going to turn our attention to the screen to watch this announcement. And then we're going to close and be out of here. Amen. Hi there, family. Welcome to CRC and especially our first time visitors. We are so excited that you have joined us today. Now at CRC, we are... Proud, proud of the, the vision, vision, proud, proud of, of the, the house. house. Yes, Ange. Therefore, we are having the most amazing building and the facilities. So kindly keep it clean as you found it. You've seen at the doors, you're not allowed to come in with your food inside the building. You're only allowed to have your water at least. So let's keep it clean and make this building more beautiful. heaven for the glory of God because this is our assignment and we are unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen family. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Come on. Amen. What a privilege it is to be part of this amazing church. We've got leaders and pastors that will, that will be waiting for you after the service if you need prayer for anything. Other than that, let's go make a difference. Let's have a powerful week in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.